And a global developing story of what could be the biggest medical scandal in decades. The Alzheimer's research that has been used to treat possibly millions of victims and the target of untold billions of dollars spent worldwide is possibly based on a fabrication. It comes down to a research paper published in 2006 by Sylvain Lesney in Nature magazine, now cited by more than 2,200 other researchers that claimed a specific protein known as amyloid beta 56 was responsible for Alzheimer's in animals. Tests. But replicating that research with humans proved very elusive, and a six month investigation by Professor Matthew Schrag at Vanderbilt University with Science Magazine and Forensics Analysts now alleges that the photos in that 2006 study were potentially doctored. The investigation alleges that strains of the protein were copy pasted and digitally replicated in the research paper. And should these allegations be proven true, it bears the question how will Alzheimer's research recover from a decade and a half long? wild goose chase and lost opportunity to find effective treatments. To break this down and more, we are joined by Professor Eitan Okun. He's the head of the Paul Theater Laboratory for Alzheimer's Disease Research. And please explain to us uh, just a little bit more how much of modern Alzheimer's research has been based on Lesne's work and particularly research that you're doing in your lab and around Israel as a whole. Hi. So, in fact, the research uh, led by uh, Lesna did not affect uh, significantly the Alzheimer-related research uh, worldwide. Uh, to understand the impact of his uh, uh, research or Aaron's research, we need to understand a little bit about the pathology in Alzheimer's disease. So we know that in the disease, there are two types of proteins that accumulate in the brain um, as the disease progresses. One of these proteins is called amyloid beta. And initially it was thought that the large chunks of protein that, are, that aggregate in the brain are harmful. Later, it was uh, revealed that it is smaller chains of this protein that um, uh, cause harm to the neurons. Now here comes uh, Lesness uh, sort of uh, scientific contribution. He found or uh, described one of those chains, it's called amyloid beta 56, um, and he claimed that this particular chain is responsible for the cognitive decline that patients with Alzheimer's disease experience. Now, this type of research was uh, followed uh, up in several labs, both labs that work with uh, animal models as well as the uh, labs that uh, work with uh, human patients. Some of them found this uh, um, short chain of amyloid beta protein, or at least what they thought it is, and some, or should I say the most, did not. And um, therefore, uh, it is mostly Lesnes lab that worked on this particular uh, topic. Uh, therefore, the implications of uh, this uh, scientific uh, fraud, if you like, are not as widespread as people may think. I want to jump in here and ask, in your experience researching neurodegenerative illnesses, there's a trend that it's very difficult to find conclusive results one way or another. There's difficulty with the cause and effect of things like the protein buildup. What leads to this difficulty in getting good conclusive answers to how any of this works? Well, so the two proteins I mentioned earlier, amyloid beta, and there is another one called tau, we know how to characterize them in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. So all of the patients with Alzheimer's will exhibit uh, brain pathology with these two proteins. However, we do not know what causes the accumulation of these proteins. And it is imperative for us to understand what are the root causes for this accumulation. Otherwise, we will not be able to engage in early diagnosis of the disease. And early diagnosis is critical for drug development. Because even if we will have a, a highly theoretically effective drug, we, it will not be effective if we treat the patients when symptoms already appear. We must be able to target this uh, disease as early as two decades before symptoms appear. Given how many unknowns we see in the field of Alzheimer's research and the 
very complicated nature of any sort of brain disease research. Are there any promising avenues of research that we can see providing solid answers that you're working on or that you see in the near future as possible breakthroughs? Yes, well, there are some uh, 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 promising interventions. For example, I mentioned those uh, chains of amyloid beta. Many researchers uh, throughout the world are thinking about uh, ways to prevent the elongation of those chains into large chunks of uh, amyloid protein that we see in the patient's uh, brains. Um, there are many labs, uh, uh, our lab amongst them, that focus on uh, neuroimmunology, which is studying how the immune response is uh, involved in the disease progression. And um, there are uh, additional labs that focus on earlier intervention. So the cumulative effort by all of the different Alzheimer's-related labs in the world is expected to help us and get uh, towards um, therapy for this pathology. It is not the, the action of one particular lab. It's the joint eff uh, effort of many, many labs. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Professor Okun. That's all the time we have with you, but you really did help break down a very complicated story for us.